Hello everyone, Reggie Time here and it's time for the weekly blog vlog thingy. There's going to be an overall month results review next week. It'll just be very quick, probably tag it on the start of a video maybe, who knows. Um, but now we're just going to look at the week and we're going to start with what happened on Sky. And what happened on Sky was I played one day of poker on the 19th, the last Friday night. I could only get two tables that were worth playing. I played over three hours and managed to win £50, but... Sky's been pretty rubbish this week. Um, I logged in Friday night. I, like I said, I couldn't find two tables worth playing. Saturday, Sunday was uh, pretty meh. Nothing special. Every time I logged in, it just looked like the same five to ten regulars. Pretty much just propping up every table with the occasional fish like, interspersed between them. And um, it just seemed bad. And it's because of this like awful rake race that they continue to run under different guises on what seems like now a monthly basis. Um, I mean, I'm hoping... That Sky is going to drop off again at some point and make it make it an option, but it certainly wasn't much of an option last week, especially when it's viewed in the light of my results on Triple Eight, which were pretty damn good. We played for twenty two, nearly twenty three hours on Triple Eight, and we made four hundred and seventy six dollars, which is very pleasing indeed. Um, we ran slightly with EV but we still had like a phenomenal win rate of course it's a small sample size it's it's not sustainable to win at that win rate of course but we'll take it while whilst it lasts and um, this is how that looks in graph form so it looks pretty sexy but the sexiest thing of all is in my opinion this is my red line I'm really really pleased with this red line Um, of course it's an indication of running good still Um, excuse me while I take a sliver of my tea it's an indication of running good because we're just in less situations where we're being forced to fold. Um, that came back to back me in the ass a little bit last night in these situations where I was at the start of my session for whatever reason. Um, I was a bit stationary. I don't know why. Um, I think it was a little bit situational, a little bit lack of discipline on my part. We will see some of those hands in a moment when we do the hand review. Um, as always, no shame in my game. There's going to be some hands we look at that I probably haven't played too great, but there's no point in not in not showing them too because otherwise it all becomes very dishonest doesn't it so that's how and um, that's broke down we started the week playing 30 and l one table snap just for making video purposes then we jumped into a 15 l game i think either on tuesday, I think on tuesday i'm not sure so we did a couple of one table in 50 videos none of them have come out yet i've got about 10 or 11 videos just ready to roll now um, I've been doing a lot of recording this week, which is maybe why my standard of my play has been a bit higher because obviously when I'm recording, it's it's um, I'm more focused, or I think I'm more focused anyway, and um, I'm obviously more keen to play really well so I can show myself in a good light. Um, but yeah, we'll look at all those too. We'll look at the hands in a moment. But yeah, I think I played really well. I'm really pleased with everything. Really pleased with how many hours I put in this week with Sky. It's about twenty five hours of poker. Um, and yeah, it's gone really, really well. To be fair, the 15 dollars snap games have been off the charts this week. They've been really good. Um, there's been a few regulars dotted around, but the times I've been playing, which is after midnight, the regulars are just starting to just drop off. And I've been playing with a lot of, no offence to these, these countries, but Canadians and UK players. And to be frank, the overall standard of the UK and Canadian players is significantly lower than when you play versus Eastern European players during the day, they make poker a lot easier. Um, or they make some of the Eastern European players make poker a lot more difficult. I like to say it's been easy, but it's it's certainly not been it's not been too much of a challenge. And then um, yeah, it's it's gone really good. I don't know what this means for me going forward because I still like Sky to be my main site because um because it will be against a lot of UK players, which is usually good. But when it's just there's I don't know 20 tables open of 20 30 and 50 and l and you can only maybe see out of those like 180 seats you can maybe only see 18 to 25 fish you may as well just be playing in the in a soft zoom pool if you can find it out uh, sorry in a soft snap pool i had one session of 25 and l on party poker i managed to make a tiny bit of money but fuck me it was tedious compared to the triple eight snap games we're paying a lot more rake on triple eight um but it just seems to me they've sorted out some of the problems. It seems to be not as many of the old bot accounts playing. There seems to be plenty of... like They're not 
flat out fish we, we'll see in the stats the players that are making some pretty bad plays they're not playing well but statistically i haven't run into too many wills i just went to lots of like pretty mediocre players playing like 30 slash 20 type stats that just i'm not sure what they're trying to achieve with what they're doing they're certainly not good regulars because many of them aren't even using auto reload i'm not sure where, how with poker has managed to evolve to this state on triple eight but i'm not complaining about it because at the moment, all you need to do is turn up, play a pretty solid, tight poker. And then, um, as you can see, it's capable of producing the results. We haven't had too many unpleasant downswings. We had a bit of a drop there, maybe $150. But, um, yeah, it's been good. So I think what we'll do, we'll, we'll get into the hands. And then um, we're gonna, just going to pop a filter in for all hands. We've played over 85 blinds, both won and lost. And then... We'll go from there and we'll just review every single hand that that we played. So we've got greater than, say, 85 blinds. And we're going to look at these for both won and lost. And we're just going to replay them all. So I don't know what's going to be coming in all of these. Oops, we want that to be all hands, don't we? Oh, no, it might not matter with the filter. So where do we replay all that? If we just click that, can we do replay all? So let's get into these, shall we? So we'll start with, well, we'll start at the beginning. We have King 10 suited. A player, unknown player, I didn't know this guy at all. We've got 43 hands on him apparently, but I didn't know him at the time. He raised to $1.50. At this time, I thought this this guy here in the big blind wasn't too great. I didn't think he was going to be squeezing too much. I obviously didn't realise it was like three bit of seven percent. What's his squeeze? Can we see? Squeeze five percent. So I was right in thinking that he wasn't particularly aggressive. His stats look like he's like a reasonably aggressive regular, but at the time I felt like he wasn't too aggressive. I thought we weren't going to get squeezed, and I obviously want to try and play pots versus. These, these sort of um, plays with 50 big blinds and what have you. Um, I've been calling more out of the small blind versus these types of players on the button because I just haven't been finding these games have been getting squeezed a lot. So typically this would be a three bet or fold for me from the small blind. But if, if I'm playing against where I'm not going to get squeezed, I'm just going to call and then take some flops against fish or try and take some flops against players that I think are going to be weaker or fishy, fishy players. Obviously we flop really well. Not as well as this guy, the, the, whatever the heck his name is, but we're not to know that at the time, of course. And my friend here, C bets, I put in a check raise, which I think is obviously completely standard on this board texture with this hand against somebody who's likely a fish. I mean, even if he does have like the top of his range, like an overpair or something, then we're still going to have pretty damn decent equity against him. And when he is just firing with this type of hand, obviously we're going to get to either deny him his equity. Or just get him to like punt his stack off. Big blind cold called, which kind of made me a little bit disturbed, but what can you do? Yeah, a brick on the turn. Um and I'm not sure what I did at this point. Let's see what I did. I went with the Darren, which is makes a lot of sense to me. You still think you're gonna be ahead of his range a lot of the time, unless he's just like got a set and if he's flopped a set of deuces and threes, he's slow playing of course. He then went all in, which obviously is disturbing. And you check where's the flop and pretty much like bombed the turn and you get jammed on. It's never a nice thing because quite often you're going to be behind it as we are here. This guy just randomly decided to throw his stack in there and we're just getting absurd pot odds to call. So we did call and we got there with the counterfeited two pair, which is never, never an unpleasant thing to happen. Next hand. We have six wells. I don't remember a lot of these hands, by the way. These are going to be almost like new things to me again. We have the six wells suited. There's two limpers. I'm going to guess I'm going to squeeze. Yep. No. Yeah. At the time, I remember this guy. At the time, I thought this guy was a fish. I genuinely thought he was a fish. Turns out he's just a regular who doesn't play too well post-flop. And one of the guys we talked about earlier, maybe he's probably slightly better than some of the guys I'm talking about, but there's lots of these guys who look like the kind of regulars, but post-flop, they just don't seem to play too well at all. Um, anyways, we get to a flop. 
and look at that we flop the nuts which makes poker very easy well not the nuts but you know it's as good as the nuts isn't it in this situation so this player here this bad player and this is going to be relevant later in one of the hands later because I played a pot against him last night that I lost um, but keep your eyes on this guy because he's not great this um, is Black Labs he plays all the time as well he, I'm guessing he's just a rich fish he leads out he calls we make a raise um, I'm not sure what I think about that sizing now actually but yeah I guess it's fine he decides to just jam on me which is just a huge punt yeah he's got top pair and a good shot but it's a massive punt in my opinion we obviously get there well not get there we just seal it on the turn with the flush and fade his four outs for the full house which is nice this is another 50 nil hand this is the hairy bat he's at the start of the week i classed him as like a really good regular that was one of the better ones out there tight solid etc but I did some work or not a lot of work but a little bit of work on him during the week just trying to figure out like how I can do better against him because I didn't feel like I was doing too great against him and I noticed this as you can notice his positional awareness just doesn't exist really um, if we now look at his like his raise first in he's like opening 20% early position 19 middle he's just not that positionally aware yet he increases his v-pip somewhat on the cut off and the button but they're not that's not like the curve from early position to the button that you'd expect to see from like a super talented regular. So I still think he's a solid player. He's almost certainly like printing money in these games, but he's not quite as good as I thought he was. Um, anyways, that's by the by in this time. We've isolated a limper. He's three bettos, and I think Ace King's just too strong. Red versus red, cut off versus button to do to do anything other than just four bet and get it in which is what we did and we lost to the king so the flop trolled the fuck out of us because look at that we've just gone to a favourite against the other pair on the flop it trolled us silly and then we just didn't get there next hand is a pocket kings versus pocket aces versus regular sure this one's going to be hyper interesting look at that that's how you play poker boys kings versus aces get it in and hold that is super solid poker and nothing to see there yeah, looks like we're going to flop a set here by the looks of things. We have a solid regular raising. We have a weird fishy type player, min three betting. I think at this point, his range from the cut is going to be wide enough where we can usually see a flop. I mean, if he four bets, it's going to suck. But we've got to put $1.50 more in to potentially see a flop against, to be frank, a moron. So we do just that. We flop the set, which is beautiful. For some reason, the regular decides to like lead out for us weird sizing. The fish min raises. We just call call, of course. There's no reason to do anything other than that. Then he utterly blasts the turn when he turns his two pairs. We just cool the fish off here, I guess, but whatever. We go all in and the fish calls and he does not get there. I'm going to have a run of losing hands here now by the looks of things. We open the 10 jack suited. This regular who I thought wasn't a good player at the time. I didn't have his stats on him at this point. This is early in the week, I think. He calls. We flop a good shot. I lead out. He makes a raise. At the time, it felt smaller than it was. I don't know what it was, but at the time, it felt like he'd not much of a min raised. Um, it just looked a bit fishy, it smelt a bit fishy to me, I thought with my back door flush draw and my gut shot we could certainly call and see a turn um, I'm not convinced that's a good play now maybe we could have thought about well, I don't know, I still think calling's okay here I think it's my line of the next street that's going to raise some eyebrows <laughs> we pick up a flush draw and then I'm thinking if he has been like value raising an overpair or 
a set or something maybe we can make him fold it if we like apply some pressure this was my thought process at the time it's like not the best turn card obviously a nine would have been the best turn card ten or a jack i think i could have checked and called um but given that we picked up a decent amount of pot equity here i decided to randomly or well not randomly there was some thought went into it i just thought that's just like make a committing bet size try and put some massive pressure on if he does have a hand like eight seven for example or um pocket jacks pocket queens at the time i thought he wasn't a good player to remember he did i didn't understand he was a regular at the time he seemed like a it didn't seem like a fish to me but he seemed like somebody who didn't play well and i presumed or i thought i could put a ton of pressure on him um obviously not knowing he had a set but none he had a set i might still have made the play doubt it very much doubt it i was really trying to get him off two pairs and just over pairs here he jammed it in my eye and we clearly had to just cry and call at this point and hope to get lucky which we did not do but um i think like what i've been doing more this week and i think it's been working to help my confidence it's been helping my um red line for sure is just trying to find spots to just be more aggressive this might have been a punt it might have been spew i'm not pretending this is a well-played hand but my overall strategy of just being or trying to be as fearless as possible and just um trying to apply pressure to my opponents either when i have a strong hand or when the board changes significantly where i think i can apply pressure um i think it's been helping my play significantly this might look like a punt this may or may not be a well-played hand but overall, I've been enjoying how I've been playing, and I think it's been working really well for me. Next hand here we have... Oh, yes, I remember this hand. This, possibly, in my opinion, and I talked about it in a video, but the video won't be coming out for at least three weeks because I've got so many stacked up. I'm planning on releasing maybe two per week, maybe three per week. So it could be three weeks before this video comes out. So we'll talk about it here. And I would appreciate some feedback if you've got this fine the video and... You could give me some feedback on this hand in particular. I would really appreciate it because I feel that the, uh, my opponent here played this hand. But it's, it's, a, it's a pretty decent regular. He's in the games a lot. He's got decent tightish stats. He's a regular. I, 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 in the video, I was, I was pretty flabbergasted by how badly I thought he played this hand. So anyways, let's see how it goes. He calls. We call. And we flop just a flush draw. C bet from the fishy player. This guy makes like what in my opinion is like a pretty fishy looking raise size against a fish. Yeah, I get it's three X's raise, etc. But his C bet's quite weak. This raise to me looked quite weak too. And I remember in the video thinking I was saying to myself, I'm thinking that that's a fold it's not a call, it's a fold or a three bet, and I kinda wanted to fold. But then my instincts took over and just thought this guy isn't that strong here. We can maybe make him fold something half decent. And if he doesn't fold, we still have obviously have decent equity. We have the nut flush draw and an overcard. So I mean, how bad can it be? So eventually I decided after a decent tank to, to put the three bit in. And at this point, I'm representing like all the sets and nut flush draws. My range is pretty much all the sets and nut flush draws. I don't have over pairs because I just three bit them pre flop. Uh, my, my hand's going to be pocket twos, pocket eights, pocket tens, and things like this. Maybe king queen suited too so my opponent went all in and at this point i'm just like oh fuck he's got a set never mind let's just hope to get lucky and then um, i just thought he's played really bad here. he's got just top pair queen kicker he's blocking some flush draws i guess or he's like he's, he's like blocking outs against flush draws and he just blocked top set um and i'm trying to be kind to him but to me he's, he's just he's played this hand horribly when, when versus my like three betting range here. My cold three betting check raising range here. Queen ten's just in like utterly horrendous shape. Yeah, it, I get now he's got it in against a rate again against a hand he can beat just about. But even against like the, the one of the worst hands are going to turn up with. Um, he's still only just a slight favourite. And if he's up against a set and what have you, he's pretty much he's dropping close to dead. And I talked about this quite a lot in the video because I just thought it was a pure punt from him. And uh, even though he had the best hand and he can feel like a hero because. You know, look at me, I've clung on with my top pair and I've won. I, it felt to me like that, that this guy played the hand really, really poorly. And it wasn't sour grapes either, it really wasn't. We wanted to lose the hand and it, I wasn't tilted by it. It wasn't like I was angry and like slagging him off in, in, in the commentary. I just genuinely thought he played the hand in a really poor fashion. 
But um, anyway, see one. Let me know what you think. Um, here we have two kings. We three bet versus a very weak tight opener. And somebody we're going to literally one hand on, but we're going to assume he's a fish because he's just called calling three bets with ten eight suited in in the cutoff. Um, so we go four ways to a flop. We have the over pair. We're pretty much locked in at this point. We've got an SPR of two, so we're locked into just going all the way here. We find out a very large three bet three quarters pop because at this point. And there's that many people in the pot. I'm happy to take it down now. I'm happy to get on the money. I don't really care. But there's not really that much value in making, like, in my opinion, a 40% C bet. Just charge people if they are drawing like this guy was. Just charge them the maximum to draw. If someone's in there with pocket tens, pocket jacks, pocket queens, then um, we could obviously try and get maximum value from them too. But it's just like a really good situation. We want to maximise it. So we get the call. We get a shit turn can, but at least we have the king of diamonds. If we had just like the two red kings here or what have you, sorry, the the, the black and the green king here, or the black and the red king, it might be reason to think about slowing down. But now look at that. We've got like an SPR of 0 0.5 nearly. Um, it just goes in because he can still have all the other hands we talked about, jacks, queens, kings, tens. If he's made a flush like he has here, then you know, we're going to suck out on him some of the time. So we just shipped our money in and snapped us off we did not improve but it's just nice to be in games with guys like that here we had a game with another pair of kings that didn't work out too well for us don't recall this hand too well we got raised on this wet flop I remember it now briefly I not remember too much about what my thoughts were at the time they were probably something on the lines of over pair wet board we, we can't really call here. Um, there's too many shit turn cards that we're just going to get outplayed. Um, so it's either going to be, let's just get the money in now against his draws. Because there's lots of like, like just flush draws he can have. Maybe, maybe some like pocket jacks. Still likely. Uh, I think his, his range is going to be two pairs, sets and draws here. And we, maybe we can just fold the pocket king to this board. Maybe we don't need to overplay, but... I remember I was saying I was trying to be much more aggressive in my play. And in a situation like this in the past, I would just have folded or maybe called and hoped to see some brick turns. I'm not sure, but I've just been trying to play more aggressive. When I've, when I've liked my hand and when I think of like my equity, I've tried to be more aggressive. I've tried to put the like the onus back on my opponents. Um, it's worked out really well over the week, but there are going to be some hands like this where you just end up punting a stack off to, to a better hand, which is what we did here. I just shipped it in. I, I couldn't think of like a raise size that I'd want to make other than this. When you raise it to 11.20, we just shipped it in. Obviously, he snapped us off and we did not improve. What would I like to see myself do here? I think I'd like to see myself squeeze here. Which I do. I remember now. I remember this hand now. This guy's just going to go all in. And again, this would have been recorded on video. And at the time, I just thought he's going to have some of the hands like this. And that like ace, queen, ace, jack, things like that too. Didn't really think he's going to have like kings and aces very often at all. Maybe jacks and queens. I guess if he, you know if he's doing this with eights, he's doing it with jacks and queens too. But he's going to have a lot of ace, jack, ace, queen, that type of stuff. So I was pretty confident that my call was good. And we just flopped a set and aren't we wonderful? Mm. Ah, this hand fucking annoying. This is the most annoying hand of the week because of the opponent. This guy is like, I mean, just look at the guys. 18, 11 with a 3% 3 bet. He's the most face up, nitty, shitty, probably making money, but fuck knows how regular in the games. Um, he's just not good. He's face up, and I'm very annoyed that we didn't get away from this hand against him. Um, this, was one of the, this was a hand from last night, and it genuinely did annoy me. I was a bit pissed off with myself. Um, we 3 bet him, which is completely fine, of course. I mean, two queens. I don't care how nitty he is. Two queens is going to be a 3 bet against any regular um he calls on this flop i'm just thinking it's a good flop for us i bet he raises and i'll be honest i didn't think he was gonna have too much seven x in his range um pocket nines sprung to mind but i thought he would slow play that so i'm thinking he's got like pocket tens pocket jacks and he's just shitting his pants and he's trying to get the money in um 
but because it was him as well, I was. I'm not happy about playing this hand. I think you should just have either jammed or folded, and I don't think folding's really an option. But I elected to just call for somebody and try and set a trap for somebody who, in my opinion, doesn't bluff very often. Trying to set a trap for somebody who doesn't bluff is fucking moronic. Um, I'm not happy with how I played this hand, but I'm really pissed off that I paid this dude off. Uh, terms of king, so he obviously turns a nuts. Not the second nuts. He checks back, which is, to be fair, quite tricky from him. I think I like it. And then I check, and he just like bombs the well, doesn't bomb the river. He doesn't. He? I mean, he leaves one ninety five behind. Not sure why, but we'll take the bonus. We'll take the discount. Um, and I just hoped here that he just had some kind of like missed flush draw or something. I know at this point he's not turning jacks or tens into a bluff. I know he. I mean, he can have the other two queens, but he wouldn't do this. So he's either going to turn up with pocket kings, aces, or kings here, or maybe some missed flush draw sometimes, but. I fucked up. I played the hand shit. Everything I did about this hand post flop was shit. The C bet was okay. After that, it was fucking rubbish. And I just decided to pay him off. And I was really, really annoyed. Because paying this prick off is really annoying because he's just not a good player. And I don't need to be losing $46 to him in this situation. The way the hand went down. I was actually quite annoyed with myself. We raise. So we call a race from the hairy bats. So when the big blind decides to come along with king five off. Flops top pair. He bets small. We can't fold at this point. Especially when we're going to turn a set. He checks. We bet. He min raises. I click it back because I'm a fucking superstar. Um, and I like clicking it back with nutted hands versus fish. I mean, maybe we could just go even bigger here. Maybe we can just jam it all in his eye. Who knows? I was just, at this point, kind of thought my hand's close to unbeatable. Um, yeah, of course, he could have flush draws that were given a great price to, etc. But when Fish Donk's pot check me in raise turn, that's not, they're not doing that with draws. They're doing it with made hands that they think are, like, pretty damn strong. But I was very confident my hand was much stronger, and it was, like, I was very confident it was going to be close to impossible for us to get sucked out on i thought i had him drawing dead uh, it turns out we did have him drawing dead so we just clicked it back just to try and encourage him to put some more money in try and set up like a really easy river jam he calls and then he just does our job for us on the river dunks into us and we stack him off this is another hand which is black labs again this is going to be relevant later so um at least i think it is the hand might even pop up but I think it probably will. Um, so we pot it. He calls. At this point, I'd started potting in the videos just because it was the scene like there were so many fish around who weren't playing full stacks. Turns out they weren't all fish. I mean, we've got players like this guy, 16 slash 4. He's not topping up. Um, you don't have stats in in um, when you're playing snaps. So you're just guessing that these guys are just like fish. Turns out that both of them are like kind of, yeah, the fish because they're not topping up and they're like shit and they're weak and they're tight. But they're not like dribbling fish like 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 I thought some of them might have been. Um anyways, it's irrelevant for this hand. But it's why I was potting. I was potting because I thought at the time we're in a pool with a load of like weak fish. So let's just let's just build some bigger pots. So um our man flops a really strong hand. Um he is pretty aggressive. He's very stabby versus Miss Seabets. Um, I know this guy pretty well and kind of confident he would bet here so we, we just check raised him he couldn't get his money in quick enough we thought well if we're not ahead we've got a ton of equity we were ahead but we had no equity from the turn onwards we three bet the ace king versus a Fish, uh, he fought. I think did he four bet us and we called? No, he just called our three bet. We flop top pair. We check again because again it's another guy. It turns out his one went so flops pretty low, but I felt he was aggressive. But as you can see, he's like fifty slash twenty eight forty four steel. He felt like this guy was aggressive, and I thought um, if we checked to him, he, he might have a worse ace that bets, and we can get the check raise in. He might just stab with his bluffs if we check to him. So that was the line here. Just check raise him. He checks, we make a, a sizable raise, hoping he's just got ace, queen, ace, jack. Turns out he has pocket jacks, and he thought they were the best hand. Um, which is nice, because they weren't the best hand, and we won. 
I'm going to be out here queen eight suited. I want to see how this one turns out. We just make the small blind up versus the min raise, like lots of action. Um, I guess this could just be a fall, but as I was saying, the games are playing really passively. Um, and I just wanted to get in and see flops and try and see if we could make some money for some fishy players. We obviously flop really well. So it goes min bet, raise, which is obviously completely standard with his top pair. I call pocket threes decides to just go all in which is just a bit on the random side he then goes all in and I think this one was live on video as kind of just thought at this point well we just have a ton of equity here even if we're behind we have oh, way too much I mean pairing a flush draw you know getting such good pot odds it's just right we're probably behind but just let's go because what else can we do so we did just let's go and we got there Ah, yeah, this one. This one was not my finest hour. We open the button. We get three bit very small. We call, of course. We flop in, not flush draw. He checks. We take a stab, hoping to, like, maybe think about double or triple barreling, trying to get ace, queen, ace, jack, ace, ten to fold. Um, just better aces to fold, really, and maybe some pairs at some point during the hand. He min raises. We call. Turn is a six. We turn a pair, which I don't think is too relevant once he checked min raises. I think we're going to be behind a lot, but it, it probably improves our equity because at least now we do suck out sometimes, a few times, a little bit more. We need to have like aces or kings. We, we, we pick up two more outs, which is kind of not great, but it's better than nothing. He pots it into us and. I think this one was definitely recorded. And I think my thoughts at the time were just uh, fuck knows. Oh, pair plus flush draw again. We're probably fucked by an over pair, but if he, if, you know, unless he has exactly aces, we're probably doing okay. If he has pocket kings here, we need like, uh, it's saying here we need 33% equity to call this bet. Um, we haven't got it versus pocket aces. We probably just about have it versus pocket kings. And if he is just like randomly just fucking punting, I mean, he might just have like king, queen of diamonds. He might, it, it's a long shot, but the, you know, just bad players, they just do weird things sometimes. He might just have, fuck knows, he might just have ace, king and be spewing his ring up. Who knows, that was my thought process, kind of. We're getting near enough the right odds, and if he is at any point punting here, if he's just like fucking doing something weird, then we're getting the right odds. So um, I just shipped it in his face and thought, well, not much we can do. Obviously, when, when we're behind, he's never folding. I didn't do it to make him fold. It was just kind of like, well, I'm going to see a river here anyway. I, well, again, it wasn't my finest hour. I'm not pretending I played this hand well. But I think we're getting like reasonable odds at every point in the hand to do what we've done. Um, this river, sh this shove is kind of shit. I mean, at the time I was thinking, can we just call and then just fold shit rivers? Then I was thinking, well, maybe if he's just punting ace king still, then we're going to get bluffed of a pair sometimes. I just got a bit lost, to be honest with you. Um, and just jammed it in. He snapped us off and we rivered him. So we don't always play well. I'm not pretending I always play well. None of us always play well. They're going to be, there's people who aren't fans of mine would be able to pick some of these hands apart and say, oh, you fucking fish, how bad do you play? Overall, I play well. Sometimes we play badly. Sometimes we play hands badly and we lose. Sometimes we play bad hands badly and we win. Um, this is a hand that I'm not particularly proud of, but we won it. And um, I'm not going to hide anything from any from in these blogs because what's the point? What would be the point in just showing the good hands that we played and played well? It's It would just be dishonest and completely pointless. Oh, this one was hilariously funny. I enjoyed this one a lot. You got somebody playing twenty nine slash thirteen, so you think, you know, and I didn't know much about him. He just felt like a pretty moderate regular. Nothing special. We had the two queens, just randomly flying off with a three bet, which I guess is just whatever. You know, it's three bet versus a small blind open. I think you can choose better hands to do it with, but not gonna. That isn't the funny part of the hand. This is a much more amusing part. We four bet. He decides to flat with the jack nine suited. A Jack Nine offsuit, which is fucking utterly moronic, of course. And then we just cool him off. Well, we got cool him off. We flop top set. We bet small. He min raises, which is mind boggling. Now you can see his hand. We call. 
is obviously what can go wrong here. We turn quads, which is pretty nice. We check. He decides to just dump his stack on us. Um, 29, 13. This is what I was saying earlier. Um, there's lots of these guys around 29, 13, 30 slash 18s. And they're just, they're just awful post-flop. Um, no idea what's going on there, but we'll take it. And we won, of course. Three bet the ace queen versus the very bad aggressive players open. He calls us. We flop top pair. We c bet. He calls. Turns a club. But at this point, we just got a pot size bet left. Or oh, just about. Oh, I wonder why I checked there. Because hmm. I was thinking just stick it in, Reggie. I don't remember this hand at all. Not sure why I didn't just stick it in there. But a pot size bet left is not like we're going to check fold. Um. All right, maybe at the time I maybe I was aware that he was some kind of bad aggressive player. I don't know. I don't remember the hand. Not sure where I took that line. I can only assume it's because I thought he was a bad aggressive player who would be more likely to bet if I checked than call. Uh, but I'm just guessing. But that makes sense to me. That's, that's that is the way I think a lot of the time against these bad aggressive players. Like earlier, you get to black labs with the queens versus the jack five. If I think there's a bad aggressive player, I will sometimes check to them with some strong hands to get a raise in and that's clearly what I've done here and we got there uh, sorry we held where we are here we've got the ace jack we've gone for the squeeze which I think is completely fine against a player who felt like he was pretty loose aggressive um, passive play on the button turns out 39 slash 1 lol um, we get to back raise all in we call he calls oh yes I remember this hand I played last night <laughs> this is a punt from me this is a punt I almost don't want to show it because it's embarrassing but we flop a gut shot on a fucking dreadful board for us so we've got two over cards I've got a back door flush draw and a gut shot and I just decide that I don't want to fold I don't want to check so I just do this Oh, not nice. Um, it's really not nice. This is pretty fucking ugly. Um, he snaps us off, and we back door us through. We thought hit our gut shot. That is not pretty. It's not at all pretty. Um, yeah, it's just a punt from me. Um, with the squeeze is fine. Let's just try and analyze it a little bit better than laughing at ourselves. Um, the squeeze is obviously fine. When he, that goes all in, we have to call, we can't fold. And we flop a good shot. I mean, who knows? Maybe we get him to fold his queen sometimes by jamming. Maybe we get him to fold pocket sixes, pocket fives. But it's not a total punt, but it's not pretty. It's not pretty, but, um, but it was effective on that particular hand. But the less said, the better. Yes, this is the hand we're going to talk about from... I talked about earlier against this guy who is... Pretty punty, but um, again, I'm not happy I played this. And I've no fucking clue why I just called that min raise. I didn't know I just called him. That was bad. We probably should have been three betting our ace ten to to like try and just isolate this 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 bad player in the small blind. So this is poor from me. I think they should have just popped this up to three fifty four dollars. Try and fold him out. Try and get heads up against a bad player. But at the same time, allowing another bad player in the pot isn't the worst thing in the world but I think out, when we're going to be out of position to somebody I think we should probably just 3-bet this and try and claim position at least so I'm not happy with that we flop a flush draw he leads out we call he raises yeah I butcher this hand all over the place because this well we just make this $16 and crack on with it don't we and get it in I guess against this player who we know is capable of stacking off with just draws and what have you Um. Yeah, I've butchered this hand. Played the second hand in a row we played badly. Because I should just pump this to like sixteen to eighteen dollars and just look to get the money in. Anyways, we don't. We just call turns a brick. He bets. And at this point I'm still thinking that my ace is gonna be good, my ten's gonna be good, and my flush draw. So it's just like my pot odds call. Which we do. And then the river we river the nut flush, but it's a double paired bar, but again this guy is a bit punty he can certainly have flushes here he can maybe have air sometimes 
Um, I check, he pots it, and I, I made a very quick, I didn't even stop to think about it, I didn't care the ball was double paired, I, was, I just got blinded by my flush against a bad player, and we paired him off, and I was kind of irritated at myself. And here, this is against another, this regular against, the same guys that had the Jack Nine off suit, um, as you can see, not, I mean, this, his preflop stats aren't good. I mean, he's a fish, clearly, but he's not like a super, super, like, high V-pip fish. Um, but again, just an example of how badly these guys play preflop and post-flop. He's like limp calls preflop. And then he just, like, proceeds to just, like, call his stack off with, like, a really moderate draw. We get to the turn here, we've got, like, an SPR of one. We just jam, of course. He just, he just like, flicks it in with his flush draw. Um, really poor play. And... There's been quite a few of these guys knocking around this week that just aren't that good. I'm, you might say I'm one of them, but um, I think I'd have a, I've had a pretty big edge this week. And um, yep, yeah, he just he just doesn't get there against us. Aces. So this is a thirteen L hand. This was from earlier in the week with three bet the aces. Call called out of the big blind, and we just flop a set. How wonderfully exciting! Jams, I mean, this turn jams ridiculous, of course, it's really bad. Um, we snap it off and we hold another 13 L hand, get three bet by a regular who has a small three bet. I didn't, wasn't aware of that, but it doesn't really matter. We just have ace king. We just at this point, I decided given that he's also called, called, I just jam my hand in. Um, not sure why I've jammed to be fair. I think I should probably just make it like maybe eight dollars fifty, something like that, and call it off. But I like to jam. Maybe just wanted like maximum fold equity against this guy. And maybe this guy like stacks off with worse. I'm not sure. Um, maybe you thought there's enough dead money into just trying like just take this pot down. Now there's seven fifty in the pot. It's you know, it's not insignificant. Maybe I just decided fucking and try and pick this pot up now. We have, do we do have a ton of fold equity against this guy, but. Not versus queens, and he holds. We've flatted versus a bad player on the bottom with king nine suited. Again, not sure about this hand. I think maybe we could three bet here just to isolate him. This bagalum turned out to be um, another one of these weakish regulars, and then we got somebody who's fishy in the blind. So maybe that's why I decided to just flat, thinking I'm not going to get squeezed. Let's just see a pot in position against the fish. So he leads out with his set. We just call. We turn a straight, do we? Yes, we turn a straight. He checks. We bet. He calls with his inferior straight and his flush draw. He checks. We jam the river and he calls with his inferior straight. So on to the last hand of this watch my gig. That's a 20 and 0 pot. It was supposed to be from earlier in the week when I just, I think earlier in the week, this was like an afternoon session when the snap bows didn't look great and I was just dicking around playing some 20 and L just to pass some time. We open, we get min three bet by a fish. And he's had to four bet, which is obviously completely fine. He calls. We flop just two over cards. We turn flush draw with two over cards. And I decided just to jam it in his face. Um, I don't like it, but he was playing very aggressively. But I don't like this. No, I don't like this. We've got equity with two over cards, and we have a flush draw. It's a four bet pot, too. No, no, there's no excuses. I don't think I like it much. I think we should probably just call again, not to make our hand. Well, we get there anyway. So yeah, there's been some hands that have not played that great there. But I think some hands I've played well. There's also lots of hands where um, my aggressive play has been rewarded by just getting folds and what have you. There's been lots of like 30, 40, 50, 60 blind pots that I've been picking up. As you can tell by my red line, if we go back to the, the graph just momentarily before we end the video. It's been a long one, I'm aware of that. Um, as you can see by my red line, He's been really good and just having this extra aggression, just being more aggressive than I typically have been has really worked out. It's, we've punted a couple of times, but that's going to happen when you play more aggressively sometimes. And it, sometimes it works in your favour because obviously it creates an image that allows you to get more value for your hands. Not pretending I've played like 
like really well in every hand this week. There have been some hands that have not played well, but we've seen them all. We've seen every hand because we've seen all the hands that have not played well being punished for. We've just seen them all now. So overall, I think I played really well. We had like we had a good EV session last night, but yeah, but a bit above EV, big deal. Um, we've certainly been running below EV before this week, so I'm not going to complain too much. And in terms of like, how do you knock this filter out? How do we knock this filter out? Like that. In terms of like the week in general, yeah, we're running slightly above EV, but we're still got a phenomenally good win rate. We're not super high above EV in terms of big bounce for 100. And I think it's been just like a really good week. Am I going to have $500 weeks every week? Of course not. Um, but we'll take it where we can. It's, we've made a cheeky monkey this week and we're going to be happy with that. Um, next week, who knows, we might make nothing. That's just like when we're already playing maybe six, seven thousand hands per week. There's going to be lots of times where you don't make a fucking cent or lose money. So we'll take the heaters when they come and we're happy with it. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have any comments on the hands, particularly um, the Ace 4 suited versus Queen 10 that, we, that I went over in a bit more detail in the video, please do. Um, Please do comment. I'd be interested. Even if you want to say you played that really bad and call me a name. I'm not going to respond to like trolling or abuse. But if um, if you've got any comments, I really would like to hear. Really would like to read them. Uh, we'll leave it there. We'll be back. Probably going to put a video out Monday and Wednesday next week. Two of the video, two of the live play videos, so you can kind of see how how I've been playing this week in more detail. If you're interested, if you're not, then don't watch it. And we'll see you then. Bye bye for now.